Okay, Dr. Sala. So, shall I start? Yes, please. You can go ahead. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Dear colleagues from uh, Salala and uh, from other hospitals as well. I would uh, thank Dr. Sala for his uh, continuous effort for OSO, this continuous, uh, uh, these presentations. So, uh, moving on to the simpler topic from a complicated one. Actually, it is a titanium elastic nailing system and its scope. I am Dr. Shekhar Malviya, working as a specialist in Sultan Kabus Hospital. Uh, this topic is quite simple, but uh, uh, the scope of it is uh, increasing gradually. So it is uh, uh, titanium elastic nailing is called as TENS or ESIN, Elastic Stable Intramedullary Nailing. So almost uh, first I would like to give you some statistics for the cases done in Salala in our hospital. Almost uh, 98 cases were done. Most majority of them it healed without complications. There was one non-union case or refracture because patient had trauma. Uh, uh, you can say within two weeks after removing the tense nail, it was in the alna, and uh, ultimately plating done. It was decided to plate, and fracture healed uneventfully. Uh, nail tip irritation was. It's a common complication and it was uh, bothersome in around five patients. In one patient, skin gaped and what we did, we trimmed the nail tip and sutured the skin back and that skin healed completely. I would uh, like to show you the x-ray in the later part of my presentation for this case. There was cut through in one patient. This patient was very typical because he had uncontrolled insulin dependent diabetes the patient was very non compliant he had end stage renal disease uh, once we faced the cut through of tense nail in humerus this patient was operated for humerus case it was an adult around 30 year old male so this patient was revised with the plate and ultimately his fracture healed some more statistics there are some intermediate in this category. Category one is considered, we are considering intermediate in which a single bone fracture was there, in which nine patients were male and five patients were female. We considered major if a long bone of lower limb or both bone of upper limbs were fractured. Most of the patient fell in this category in which around 60 patients were male and 23 patients female, almost you can say one third of the patients were female. And there was one major plus, this patient was having a uh, camel bite injury uh, with severe soft tissue injury of forearm. We used the tense nail, which was against the, uh, we can say the uh, principle of fixation of the forearm bones. In category one, the patients were of zero to five years. In category two, five to 15 years, which is the usual age for operating with a tense nail and this patient which was major plus this patient was around 61 year old so historically people have used various types of implants for fixing the uh, long bone fractures and using various techniques in which ivory pins were used initially kuncher nail renders nail rush nail and uh, using the nails with the other techniques but in France, around 1980, surgeons, they devised a titanium elastic nail on the principle of three-point fixation. This construct was with the property of elasticity and stability. They observed that precise contouring of this titanium nail, it provides them axial as well as lateral stability and to some extent rotational stability as well. But some surgeons, they doubted that. This tense nail is primarily used for primary definitive care of long bone fractures in children in pediatric age group. It provides biological healing because children have thick periosteum. This implant is very soft tissue friendly and as we all know that titanium is very biocompatible. As per the new uh, concept of AO, micro motion 
not rigid fixation micro motion it promotes callus formation so it also helps in that it maintains alignment length as well as rotation biomechanics of tense nail is not a complicated one usually we use two nails of same size we curve the nail uh, and according to the type of the fracture or the fracture pattern and we use two opposing nails opposite to each other and we make sure that the maximum curvature of the bent nail is in the fracture zone to provide three point fixation we expect biomechanically we expect that this tense nail will provide flexural axial rotational as well as translational stability flexural stability means the tense nail it it is of same strength means uh, the same size so that the fracture doesn't bend at the fracture point and it should hold the fracture in its proper alignment axial stability because once we provide three point fixation at the entry point in the fracture zone and in the dense metaphyseal cortex so the axial load of the fracture axial load of the on the bone on the fracture it should be maintained so that the alignment of the fracture and the bone is maintained translational the bend of the nail the bend of the nail should be enough and especially in the fracture zone the maximum bend should be in the fracture zone so that the translation of the fracture fragment doesn't happen and it also provide it also follows the three point fixation pattern when we fix the tense nail entry point fracture zone and the dense metaphyseal cortex or the distal cortex from where we are starting it should be fixed properly so that it provides a proper rotational stability which are the uh, these are the prerequisite of tense nail when we are fixing any fracture with the tense nail the principle is three point fixation that means the entry point it should touch the entry point it should touch the maximum curvature of the nail should be in the fracture zone it it, it is along the endosteal surface and in the metaphyseal segment the distal metaphyseal segment indications now the coming slides are important because tense nail it was very limited initially when they have started putting tense nail but gradually the scope is increasing initially they were using for 5 to 10 years or 11 years old children which were usually uh, plated in in the beginning but they devised this system so that the soft tissue trauma is less and they started uh, between the age of 3 to 5 years to 13 to 15 years keeping the mind that weight of the patient is an acceptable limit it is ideal for the transverse fractures and length stable fractures but it can be used for short and log oblique fracture which has enough cortical support spiral fracture as well it can be used in comminuted multi fragmentary and stable fractures segmental fractures sorry segmental fractures and it can be used in a pathological fracture in children with a juvenile bone cyst this can be used for all long bone fractures like femur tibia humerus radius and ulna and in femur it can be used for diaphyseal metaphyseal as well as subtrochanteric fractures tibia it is used for diaphyseal and distal metaphyseal mainly because proximal metaphyseal fractures are amenable for angulation so we have to use it with caution in humerus diaphyseal subcapital fracture and supracondylar fracture which are not amenable for key wire fixation and radial and ulna shaft definitely it can be fixed and there is a special technique metazio technique for radial neck fractures for fixation of radial neck fractures in which it is put uh, tense nail is put in retrograde manner and rotate the after engaging the radial head it has to be rotated this is very important slide which i am going to discuss because i am discussing about the extended indication this is my main focus because tense nail is usually used for pediatric fracture but in our practice and we have observed that this can be used for four and uh, forearm and arm fractures in adults as well but keeping in mind that it is suitable for those patients it can be used for polytrauma patients with head injury as a part of damage control orthopedics when major surgery is not feasible 
and it can be used for prophylactic stabilization in juvenile cyst patients who are prone for fractures. So uh, there is a possibility that prophylactic stabilization can be done as well as in osteogenesis imperfecta patients. Contraindications are not many because it's a simple implant and used for a limited uh, uh, age groups. So intraarticular fractures are the main indication for these uh, patients if intra because this needs proper reduction of fracture fragments otherwise it will lead to secondary degenerative changes and we have to be a little bit cautious when using in complex fracture pattern especially in overweight patients who are more than 15 years of age now coming to implant implant is very simple it's not very uh, complicated implant uh, and it comes in six sizes uh, with a specific color coding from 1.5 mm size to 4 mm sizes and the length may vary because uh, only 1.5 mm it comes in 300 otherwise they come in 400 mm length when we are choosing the implant we have to be careful because we have to use two nail of same size and we should measure the narrowest diameter of the canal which uh, the bony canal which we are going to nail and we should take the size of the nail which is filling the almost 40 percent of the diameter of the narrowest part of the canal and we should choose two nail of equal size but on an average if children are of average size in six to eight years old patients 3mm nail can be used in 9 to 11 years 3.5 mm and in 12 years 12 to 14 years old patient around 4 mm nail usually can be used instrumentation is also not very complex one everybody will be aware because we all are using in this fixing various fractures these are the instrument for opening the canal it is uh, indicated for femur only but uh, we can uh, use it for any bone usually bone all drill bits and the power drills instrumentation for inserting and removing the nail this is a very useful tool if it is available it can be used for reduction of the or you can use the free hand techniques moving on to surgical uh, standard surgical procedure uh, usually in supine position on radiolucent table or a fracture table if your patient is big or you don't have fracture table, uh, radiolucent fracture table is not available. Aseptic preparation, and you should be aware of your instruments. Now, choosing to entry point, it is described for femur fractures. So, we should be careful when we are choosing an entry point because there are important structures. First thing is that we should avoid the joint line, joint line as well as epiphysis. It should be around 2.5 to 3 centimeter above the epiphyseal line and on the medial side there is femoral artery so we should be a little bit careful in femur if we if you take a rough estimation it is around one finger breadth above the upper pole of petal after skin incision you can open your medullary cavity either by using drill bits or using bone all and when we are prepared to insert the nail we should pre-bend the nail as per the fracture pattern if fracture is more proximal so our bend should be according to the fracture pattern and we should make sure that the maximum bend is in the fracture zone you can bend your nail either with a hand or tabletop bender when we are inserting the nail we start to insert the nail we should make sure because the tip is slightly curved and it is flattened so we should make sure that the convex side of the tip it should be against the endosteal surface on the opposite side and it slides along the endosteal surface we should not be we should not insert the nail so that the tip is facing towards endosteal surface and it will pierce the bone and when we are inserting one nail reach up to the fracture side then insert the nail from the other side as well and reaching at the fracture side we can finish the procedure from one side and we can go but sometimes it leads to difficulty in reduction so this procedure is better when you are inserting both the nails together up to the fracture side then you make your reduction and pass the nail one by one after crossing the fracture site 
make sure that the tip should reach the metaphysis of the if you are using retrograde technique then it should reach the proximal metaphysical area and make sure that the second crossover this is the first crossover and this is the second crossover it should be distal to the fracture site this is very important for part in three point fixation coming to the end of our surgical procedure we have to trim the nail because uh, uh, we cannot leave the nail very long so it irritates the soft tissue so while inserting we should withdraw a little bit after reaching to the final position where we have to engage the nail the tip of the nail we should withdraw the nail a bit around 10 to 20 mm or 1 to 2 cm we can say and then cut the nail flushing through the skin and then again we should push the nail to our desired area where we want to engage the tip of the nail it is done so that the, it doesn't irritate the soft tissue as well as it engages the distal uh, metaphysial area to prevent rotation the final position should be somewhat like that and it should engage the dis the metaphysial area in this manner second crossover the fracture is reduced this is an image so i uh, I will show you some other x-rays and this is the first crossover. Here they have used end caps. So if you are lucky you have end caps in your system so you can use the end caps it reduces the soft tissue irritation but if you don't have you can bend the tip of the nail so that it doesn't migrate and it helps in removal as well. In femur there are integrate techniques also. This is called monolateral insertion. Anterolateral in the, the part which is chosen for anti-grade nail insertion is in the subtrochantric area. In this, the nail is bent. One is the usual bend, uh, which, uh, which should be like three point, like we are using in three-part fixation, uh, like tip of the nail at the entry, uh, entry site and in the fracture zone and in the metaphysical. But the second nail, should be bent in a shaped. This is the shape. This is the usual bend. What we do in retrograde femur nailing. In integrate technique, also one nail should be pre-bent like this, and the second one should be S shaped. I will show you why. This is the first nail which was inserted. Integrate technique is usually used for distal, uh, either distal shaft fracture in the lower third fracture of femur, or uh, uh, fracture which are not amenable for retrograde fixation. The first nail was inserted as usual. The second nail is inserted. And after inserting the initial part, then we should rotate the nail to 180 degree so that it appears that the nail is entering from the medial side. And the first crossover should be here and the second crossover should be distal to the fracture site. Although it is positive, fracture is quite distal, it may be possible that your second cross is not distal to the fracture. But if you are maintaining alignment, so this implant is very forgiving and it, it might help in uh, fracture healing. And this is the final position of the uh, nails in uh, anti-grade nailing. Uh, one is usual bend and the other one is bend as. In tibia also we can use especially in polytrauma patients, closed and unstable or unreducible fracture, irreducible fractures. In tibia, usually we use anti-grade technique. This is why, I, I, I will tell you why. Be, uh, because the soft tissue in lower part of the tibia is uh, not uh, much. It is only skin and fascia. So just to prevent irritation, usually anti-grade technique is used. It is inserted along the side of the tibial tuberosity and nail tip is usually curved posteriorly. This is the lateral view. The nail tip should be curved posteriorly. It can be used for fractures of radius and ulna as well. In radius, usually retrograde technique, we should be aware that when we are opening the canal, it should be two centimeter proximal to the distal radial epiphysis we should be aware that there is an area for 
when we are taking the steroid radial steroid entry point we should be aware that there is superficial radial nerve we should be careful and nail size should be almost two third of the medullary isthmus in the narrowest part it should be almost two third of the uh, diameter of the sh shaft of the radial in alna the technique is anti grade our entry point should be two to three centimeter distal to uh, ulnar apophysis uh, sorry olecranon apophysis and like in previous slide we should not cross this distal ulnar epiphysis as well while inserting while engaging the tip of the nail we should not cross this otherwise it may lead to developmental problem in children after finishing our procedure just we should make sure that the tip of the nail in radius as well in, as well as in ulna it should be facing each other it should be done so that it maintains the shape of interosseous membrane which is very important aspect in supination and pronation movement of forearm in humerus both retrograde as well as integrate technique can be used depending upon the level of the fracture retrograde monolateral technique is almost similar to the integrate technique of femur where the entry point is chosen 1 to 2 cm uh, vertically apart and 0.5 to 1 cm in medial plane integrate technique is also used for distal metaphyseal fractures of humerus but we should be uh, the starting point we should make sure that the starting point is proximal to uh, deltoid tuberosity to avoid radial nerve complications are not many because this implant is very simple but the most commonly the com the most common complication is pain or irritation at the tip at the entry site if end caps are not used skin infection can be if skin is gaping then it is a possibility that skin infection may occur mal rotation if the proper principles are not followed for tense nail then this can be a problem if nail is not engaged properly unacceptable angulation it may happen if you are not using in a proper patient you need a proper assessment of the patient before choosing this implant and implant failure once your fracture unites there is debate whether uh, this implant should be removed or not but in our practice we usually uh, remove this implant the most important thing is once fracture unites usually it takes 3 to 6 months in pediatric age group we can use locking plier with the mallet pull simply pulling the nail if end caps are used it can be easier and end cap inserter you can engage the end cap inserter and these are some of the x rays which we have done in our setup this is a fracture long spiral fracture of a femur of a 9 year old girl parents were a little worried they didn't want long incision they they wanted uh, this to be fixed properly so that uh, uh, fracture unites well we did this from initially we were also a little bit skeptical for using tens nail but we told them that this is not necessary that we will get the reduction proper and proper alignment but uh, ultimately we managed to shove in the nail initially they we were not very happy to see this x ray but on uh, proper follow up when we followed up the patient it this fracture started showing good result fracture started uniting in acceptable position this is the follow up x rays and ultimately the fracture united and we were surprised that there, there was no residual deformity this is the lateral x ray and this is the ap view this is another case which is 14 year old male uh, patient uh, this is actually post reduction first trial of uh, post reduction x ray in which it is looking acceptable position but people were of opinion that this patient should be plated but we went and we did the tens nail in this patient fracture united well and in acceptable position this is another interesting case of 13 year old chubby boy we were thinking that whether we should plate him he was 
uh, around 50 or 55 uh, kg of weight but our surgeons they did tense nailing this is the initial x-ray they supported for two weeks with the u slab this is the immediate post-op x-rays but to our surprise fracture united very well and without any deformity and this is the final x-ray after a removal of tense nail this is another interesting case of proximal femur fracture in a four-year-old boy he was hit by a moving speeding car in front of his house and he was thrown away and he has got a proximal femur fracture we did tense nailing initial reduction because of muscle forces was not looking very good but we managed to do that and this fracture also united well to our satisfaction and this is the final x-ray after removal of tense nail this is another interesting case this is a nine year old boy with a uh, spastic cp he got his femur fracture while doing physiotherapy then we were thinking that whether we should treat him conservatively because soft tissue was very limited in this patient he had just barely the skin so but ultimately we decided that we will nail him it will be a minimal surgery and we inserted the nail and it was very difficult because the canal you all can see it's a very slender canal and we inserted only two mm tense nail but done properly without opening the fracture site and to our satisfaction fracture healed very well this is the patient i told that he had skin gaping because his soft tissue was very minimal the lateral side of tip of the nail it pierces through the skin and then uh, we trim the nail tip and we sutured the skin over it but skin as well as fracture heal comfortably and uh, to our satisfaction this is another 11 year old girl of distal metaphyseal fracture of tibia we did tense nailing and fracture united very well this is a case i would like to show you because this is a case of assault in a 30 year old male he had got he has got a fracture of proximal ulna as well as distal ulna although distal is undisplaced but we were thinking that if we are planning to operate by plating so we have to open almost complete forearm on the, although on the dorsal surface but so we decided to put a nail our brave surgeons they put the nail and to our surprise fracture healed very well and recently his tense nail was removed and patient is comfortable and no uh, deformity and uh, no limitation of movement so the take home message is that this implant has many good qualities like biocompatibility it is very soft tissue friendly and less traumatic it does not disturb the fracture healing environment because we do with the minimal incision so it helps in biological healing initial stabilization of the fracture even in adults in polytraumatized patient where major surgery is not feasible as a part of damage control it can be done if not giving satisfactory result in the initial part uh, if initially we have used as dco then we can convert it to other form of definitive fixation and removal of this nail is not a problem because removal is quite easy with a small incision and we can avoid using cumbersome hip spica or cast in patients in which uh, usually the age group initially uh, we used to do hip spica in three to four years old up to five years old uh, children and either we are putting cast for tibia so if we are putting tense nail we can avoid the cumbersome uh, uh, cast and uh, these things so now coming to the end of my lecture, thank you very much for your patience listening. Thank you, Dr. Shikhar. It was thank a perfect uh, blend of art and science and entertainment.
I enjoy every minute of it. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Salah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now we open the floor for the participant with us this night. If you have a questions or comments, you can go ahead. Just open the mic and ask the question. Uh, thank you, Dr. Shekhar, uh, for your nice presentation. Thank you, sir. And, uh, since, since I have been working in Salah, uh, I found the results very encouraging of uh, elastic needs. Uh, as in my previous uh, posting for 20 years, we, we didn't use many elastic needs. Maybe because those days, uh, uh, our the consultant was not happy with this. Uh, sometime it took extra time. So that's why he was a little, little reluctant about it. And uh, in your presentation, as you said that, that there are contraindication like intra-articular fractures, which, which is understandable. But uh, the other one, when you say the complex fractures, you are using, you can't use in overweight and in adults. However, in the extended use of your elastic nail, you, you recommend even to use it in the adults also. So, so far in, in Salala, the series which you have presented very well with the elaborated X-rays and good results, with very, very minimal, I mean, acceptable superficial skin irritation and very minor complications. And uh, so how many cases you think uh, really help in adults? Because it's like in tibia and all that, with the, in radius and I remember we used. So in our series, you remember how many adults we use and uh, how you compare the results in adults? So all, almost uh, four adults uh, we have used mm -hmm. this tense nail. Mm -hmm especially in uh, like one patient in humerus we used, although it got cut through, but, uh, uh, and in a patient, uh, 13 year old boy, which was almost of adult size, we used it and almost uh, the fracture healed very well. And a patient of forearm fracture, the camel bite I discussed, although I could not retrieve his x-rays, but in that fracture also during follow-up, his fracture healed very well. And uh, uh, the X-ray I showed the segmental fracture of Allah. These four patients, which as far as I remember, that we used it and uh, uh, this implant has given us good result. All right. Thank you. Thanks for the nice presentation. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Aron. Next question you can ask. Actually, my main stress was uh, this implant. Usually, we are using for uh, pediatric age group. But uh, what I feel that this implant, because it is so soft tissue friendly implant, and we can say it's a very straightforward implant, uh, which provides a lot of flexibility, and it is very forgiving. So we can use even in adults if the particular patient uh, it fits into our criteria and we should inform the patient that we are taking a chance that with minimal surgery, if your fracture unites, then you might skip a major surgery because if we are doing plating in the same, in the same age group of patients, like five, five to 10 years of age or five to 12 years of age. So second surgery just for removal of implant, it will be a major trauma to the patient. But in cases of tense nail, it's a very small incision and you just pull the nail and you can discharge the patient by evening. Good point, Hello. Dr. Uh, Shekhar. You yeah, raised it yeah, and yeah. about the extension use of the elastic nail with the particular patient with a particular indication. And you should inform the patient, as you said. Yeah, this is very important that patients should be aware that we are using uh, uh, this uh, implant 
because uh, it will give him minimal soft tissue trauma. That's why we have used in our X-rays. We have used, uh, we have seen that uh, we did not open the fracture sites, and it is so soft tissue friendly, and it provides the biological environment. So that, that's why once the initial uh, the pain due to initial trauma uh, is relieved. The fracture aligns itself. Can I ask a question or a comment? Yeah, sure, sir. Uh, sure. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Jack, for a very informative uh, presentation. Actually, the most uh, extensive indicated in our unit to use it in elastic near an adult is actually clavical fracture. Yes, sir. We, yeah, we exactly. We use it actually a lot in clavicle fracture, particularly, and we found very satisfactory in clavicle fracture, particularly uh, certain pattern. But for other fracture like uh, humerus and uh, tibia and so, because we do have intramedullary nail, and uh, we do like a damage control with all of this, so that's um, basically it's we use it for in the adult. And also, uh, really, sometimes we use it in ulna fracture in adult, ulna fracture, particularly the distal part of the distal third of the shaft. We, this is the two main uh, I found in the adult, the clavicle and the ulna fracture. It can be used safely without any problem with minimal, actually, as you said, uh, intervention. But uh, the other major bone, still not really, because majority of the humerus or femur or that we do intramedullary in it. Uh, the side. Uh, yes, sir. my point was in which the major surgeries were not amenable, which is not feasible at that particular moment if a polytraumatized mm -hmm. patient. Only sure, those sure. patients. I know I understand that that's the point of uh, like uh, managing of uh, control, damage uh, control trauma in multiple, yeah, damage control. Yeah, yeah that's it. Very interesting. Thank, thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you, sir, for thank your you. valuable input. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ayman. Uh, another question? Last question will be, or comment? Then we can give a relief to Dr. Shikar. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I would like to have more discussion on this topic because this is a very simple but uh, very interesting uh, uh, topic of discussion. I agree. Uh, Dr. Haytham? Yeah, uh, good evening to Chekar. Uh, uh, nice yes. presentation. Uh, yes. Just, yes. I would ask uh, about the boost bone in, uh, in adult because yes. it is against the principle, because principle in the boost bone for arm to fix by uh, anatomical reduction and absolute stability using the plate. Yes. And I cannot uh, justify if patient went to non union. Or something I cannot justify why I use the tense nail. Uh, do you have any evidence in tense nailing in both bone forearm? Tense nail both bone forearms in adults. Adult. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the main thing that you have to choose specifically for if patient is very thin, and if patient had any other injuries of, or you can have, you can say that patient has soft tissue injury as well, in which you cannot you cannot put the uh, 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 dynamic compression plating just to avoid infection. So in those cases, by informing the patient that, okay, we are choosing this implant, particularly in your case, that it if it leads and fracture should not be very comminuted one, it should be length stable fracture. So in by informing the patient properly, then only we can use Definitely, I, you are telling uh, true that uh, it is not justifiable because in forearm, like uh, in previous presentation that uh, Dr. Isham told, it's a diarthrodial joint. It works in tandem. The whole forearm works in tandem. If anything is not working, then your movements will be limited. 